Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. This series just does not stop. Praise God for that. We are in the midst of love, sex, and relationships. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 7. And this particular sermon falls on Easter Sunday. It is perfect. God ordained it. And so I want you to listen in and be blessed by this powerful, powerful word from God. Love bears all things. My scripture today is out of 1 Corinthians. Everybody say 1 Corinthians. Chapter 13. Say chapter 13. Verse 7. Say it with me. Love bears all things. Say it again. Love bears all things. Of course it's Easter. Of course it's God's house. And of course I, I'm, I'm a man of God who the Bible says I'm held to a higher standard. Everybody say higher standard. So of course I'm going to tell this story in the most family friendly way. Amen. I know you're a carnal bunch, so I can get away with more here, but on Tuesday, I, I brought my handsome 11-year-old son to church here for drum lessons, and his drum teacher decided to move his drum lessons to one church, amen? And uh, we started a bit of a drum school here. Mondays and Tuesdays, there are kids that come for drum lessons, and it's a wonderful time. So a few months ago, we started the drum school and, and uh, with Cleve, and it's been going beautifully. And on Tuesday, we normally have his lesson every Tuesday at 4.30 p.m. There's a girl that goes before us at 4 p.m. So she goes at 4, we go at 4.30. Well, last week, for the first time ever, the mom came to us a week before and said, can we switch? Would you mind coming at 4 p.m.? And we'll come at 4.30 just, just for one, one day. She's got a school event, just one time. thing. It's interesting how God works, isn't it? So about 3.50 p.m., uh, my son Saint and I, we pulled in the parking lot, and not, not far from, from the main entrance here where you walk down the steps, a nice SUV was parked, and it was back in, and the back in, and the and the daylights were on, so the car was obviously running, but there was nobody in the front seat. And uh, I texted out this, I, I messaged out on Facebook this week that I, you were not going to believe the story I had to tell you today in church. So uh, of course, my my son with eagle eyes says there are some people in the back seat. He said it looks like a bunch of long hair in the back seat. He said what he said what in the world are they doing? And I tried to focus my eyes, and when I did, I said, Saint, don't look that way anymore. I said, something's going on here in the church parking lot that's probably not a good idea for you to see. And I, I, I pulled the car in and over to kind of get over away from them, gave them some space, but let them know that, that he, he, we're still here and they need to not be here. And Because uh, there in the back seat of the car was going on in the back seat of the car what has gone in the back seat of the car since cars were invented with back seats. And uh, I'm sure the same thing happened in the back seat of a covered wagon. Amen. Ed could probably tell you. I don't know. And uh, it, uh, it's a tale as old as time. Amen. A tale as old as time. So it was a couple that looked to be in their 50s. Now, uh, now when, when they saw us, you would not have believed the, the turmoil that took place in that back seat. It, it was mayhem. It was like a tornado of people and clothes and chaos and terror. And I'm sure they thought I was coming over there. Little did they know that not only were they at the church, but the pastor had pulled into the parking lot. And I, it, it was the church parking lot. And I've been preaching on love, sex, and relationships. And uh, my first thought was, my sermons must be working somehow. But I thought I would appreciate it maybe if you'd stay at home or something. And so finally, finally, finally a door opens. And this man... This man in, in his 50s, he crawls out of the back seat, and he's having trouble getting out, and he, he has a very serious face, and he's trying to straighten out his clothes, and, and uh, then you can see he, he comes around because he's, try, he's trying to cover something. He comes around the front of the car, and he's trying to cover something, but you, you, can, you can see through the front window somebody trying to slide from the back seat into the front seat feet first on their back, and, and you just see hands and arms and grabbing and figuring nobody can see it and some of you are sitting some of you are sitting there very seriously because you've been caught you've been you've been the person trying to sneak in the front seat and uh but you you could see him struggling and and then finally finally you just saw the the head rise up of of a woman just with a sheepish face and the man seriously then, then he, he figures he's covered up he seriously walks around the car the, the walk of shame he gets into the driver's seat and finally they they they, they slowly uh, drive away. And how does that fit in my sermon? It doesn't at all. I just want, I'm kidding, but uh, how, how can I make an analogy? You know, the, the scripture love bears all things is, 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 is really a bit of wordplay in the translation. I, I'm not talking about merely enduring something. 
If it was, if, if the scripture, love bears all things, was about enduring something, it would be rather redundant because later on in the scripture it says love endures all things. So it's, it's not what you did to me, I'll have to bear with it. That's for another sermon. What the scripture literally means is that love is like a protective covering. In fact, the term bear to bear comes originally from the word roof. The thought is, is somewhat of a simile, an image Paul the Apostle is giving us, and what he's saying is that genuine love covers and protects others, just like thatch of a roof covers the contents or the inhabitants below. We talked last week about how they use palm branches to cover temporary dwelling places. It's the same idea. The scripture, what it's really saying about love, it's saying that love always protects. I, I don't know what all went on in that car in the parking lot, but I do know that a conversation was probably had in the back seat where the man said, look, you stay in the car, I'm gonna get out, I will walk around to the front, I will kind of cover up, I will get, the, and then I'll get in the driver's seat, I'll get out of here. In his mind, he was thinking, I'll take the lead, I'll take the consequences, I'll face the music, I'll take the walk, and what the scripture conveys, what Paul says the love of God is, look, look at this, the love of God is a love that covers us and protects us in any and every situation. There, there is no feasible situation in which genuine love would fail to cover and to protect. The Bible tells us love, love protects, love bears all things. Whatever comes against us from the outside, God says to you and I, he says to us, whatever is coming against you, he says, don't worry about it. He says, I've got this. Whatever you're facing in your life, God's got it. Did you know that? Turn to somebody and say, God's got it, whatever it is. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, give you, let me give you an illustration. Everywhere the Pope goes, who's ever seen the Pope? He goes in the big crowds and he rides in the Pope mobile and you've seen it, it's bulletproof and bulletproof glass and the Pope rides around and waves at everybody through that glass and we're buying one of those for the church for me, just for when I come, I'm kidding. So uh, April Fool's. And so, uh, so now, now contrast that to the American president. They, they go, you see the, our, the president goes right out into the crowds, goes there's no Pope mobile, there's no bulletproof glass. They walk right along through the crowd. How do they do this? They got some help. What are those guys called? Secret service agents. They don't go anywhere without their secret service agents. The secret service agents are there to protect them. Whatever the problem is, whatever attack comes, whatever, they are there to bear all things. You with me? And get this, they not only protect the president, but they protect his family as well. You might not see them, you might not even notice them, but they are there at all times protecting everybody in that family. In fact, uh, because it's a wonderful example, let me show you a picture. This is a really great picture of Malia Obama. See the circle around her? She's there in, in, in this big crowd, in, in, in back when her dad was president. She's at a concert, but do you, can you see her Secret Service agent in the crowd? It's not the guy in the yellow, it's not the guy down in the front, he's right by her in the crowd, right right there, and, and right next to her. You want, you want me to show you? Do, do another picture, will you? Malia, there's the Secret Service agent. You see him? You see him? See the little arrow? He's right there behind her. See the, let, let me, let me, let me cl let, close it up. Dino, do a close up, will you? Look at that. That is exactly what my daughter's going to look like at prom. <laughs> Amen. See, now let me tell you something. That guy was right there protecting her all the time. Even when we didn't notice him or recognize him, he was right there all the time. And it's the same way with God. Did you know that? This is the love of God. That God, even when we don't see him, even when we don't think he's there, God is right there all the time. He protects us. He bears us up. In, in fact, I, did you all know I've got my own secret service agent? Did you know that? Oh, you didn't see him? You didn't notice him when he came in? You, you didn't? Really? <laughs> now I can say anything. This is, this is the representation of what God is in our lives but an unlimited amount greater because he's God. And, and you know, 
what having this covering, you know what having this protection gives me? It gives me boldness to know that God is always covering me and always protecting. It makes me bold. I walk differently with that boldness. I talk differently with that boldness. I might have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, but it says I don't have to fear any evil. Why? Because God is what? Because God is with me. Look, if I've got to go into battle, of course God go, will go with me. But, but who else do I want to go with me into battle? I want people who, other people who will protect me and cover me like I'm going to protect and cover them. If you're in my life, I'm going to cover you and protect you. That's the love of God. And that is what God does for us. Look at, look at this scripture, Joshua 1, nine. Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be troubled. For God, what's it say? God is with you wherever you go. Friends, there is never anywhere you go where God is not right there protecting you and covering you. Even if you go somewhere he doesn't want you to go and do something he doesn't want you to do. When he showed up at Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and they had just sinned, they brought all the sin in the world, what's the first thing God did? Covered them. Matt's in my illustration today. And, and, and look, when I walk over here, when I walk over here, what happened? What happened? Right? When I walk over here, what, what happened? Right here. When I got to go down, I got I to gotta go meet somebody, what happens? I go down to the front row and I think, nice to meet you. Hello there. Good to see you. Right? Right? When I go, wait, I got to go over here. Oh, this, this nice lady wants a hug. I'm going to go over here. Her beautiful Easter ball. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Got to be careful. He says, be careful. So, so it, it, this, is, this, is, this, is the picture of, this is the picture of God. Hello? Hello? God says, I can't go anywhere where he's not covering me and protecting me. He, he, may, he might not like where I go, but his love is going to go with me. His love and cover me. You, you, know, you know the roof on your house? The roof on your house is built so that it doesn't matter what comes down. If it comes down, your roof can handle it. Rainstorm, hailstorm, whatever comes down. Look, I, I, I don't care. I don't care who you are. If you've got to get through Matt to get to me, guess what? You're not getting to me. You're not getting through. Amen? And, 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 but, but you, you know why? Because if, if Matt's job is to protect me, if he has to, he will die doing it. He will. He'll die doing it if he's got to. Back when I was a kid in Wisconsin, we had a tornado take the roof off our house, the whole roof in one piece, uh, 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 and, and, and the whole thing, and it laid it down in a field near our home. You know why the roof came off? The inspectors came out and they said it came off because it was barely attached. The final report said they only found, I still remember as a kid, the, 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 the man talking to my parents saying the final report came back that there were only about three to five nails that were holding the roof to the house. They were barely holding on. Look, church, be encouraged because that's not God. When you attach yourself to God, God attaches himself to you and he will not let you go. No storm, no nothing's going to get... Here, here's, here's the scripture. Look at this. Look at this. Romans 8, 38. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, or demons, neither of our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Wow! No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul wrote this, Paul wrote this scripture after he'd been through hell. He was the most persecuted of all the disciples of Christ, been in prison more times, faced death more times. In fact, let me, let me read you just a, a tiny, tiny bit. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty four. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I have believed. I have believers. I have labored. I've known hunger and thirst and have gone with, without food. I have been cold and naked. What would you go through this week? And, and, and question if God really loves you. What would you go through this week and question is God really there for me? It makes me re-examine my complaints. How about you? Paul went through all of this and after all of his sufferings, the one thing he says he knows is that nothing can separate him from God's love. My friends, God's attached to you, covering you and protecting you. Where was I? Where was my family when the roof came off our house? We were in the basement in a corner where my father had spread his body. I can still picture him. He'd spread his arms and his body over us in the cemented in laundry room. And you know what? Five years old never had a fear in my mind. Why? Because my father was covering me. See, I can try to run away from God. 
I can try and break away and sin away and get away and leave the church and quit the Bible and, and run with every sinner in town, but I cannot get away from the love of God that covers me and protects me. His love, I don't care how far you've gone from God, His love has never been but a breath away. This is the love that God wants you and I to have in our relationships, to not just be there for one another, but to be a covering and, and, and a protection for one another, to not just stand with one another, but to stand for one another. We stand, I stand up for Matt, and Matt stands up for me. If you're in my life, I'm standing up for you. And not only is God with you and standing for you, but he promises he'll never leave you. Look at this, Deuteronomy 31, 6. God will never leave you. Say it with me. God will never leave you or abandon you. Everybody else might leave you, might give up on you, might break up with you. Friendship, marriage, whatever. But the love of God that bears all things, he never stops protecting and covering you. I love elephants. Who loves elephants? In Kenya, Ashley and I got to play with baby elephants. And one of them loved my wife. He ran right into her. Tell you what. And, and ran into her. And elephants are a great example of bearing all things, of, of covering. When, when a lion is threatening to attack a young elephant, look at this, look at this beautiful picture. Look, when he's, the larger elephants will immediately circle around the baby. See the little baby in the middle? The elephants have circled around that baby. What are they doing? They're covering it. They're protecting it. And this is how they take care of their children. But do you know, do you know what one of the fiercest, most protective mothers on earth is? You know what it is? A mother hen. Mother hen. In fact, mother hens are so protective that when you first come in, you often can't see their chicks when you arrive at the barn because they puff up and they, and they hide their babies behind them. Even as they grow, the mother hen shields their baby un, under their wings at night. Baby chicks aren't supposed to get wet, so the mother covers them under her wings in the rain. Do you know that God does the same thing for us? Psalm 90, 91 4 says, He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings, you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Put the next one up, Dina, will you? Psalm, another Psalm, 36, 7. How precious is your loving kindness, God, and the children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And, and, and look at this. Not only am I safe under God's wings, not only are you safe, but I am joyful. I have no worries about the storm. I have no worries about my enemies. I have no worries about my trials. Uh, instead, I'm under his wings. And you know what I'm doing under his wings? I'm singing. I'm singing. Look at the scripture. Look at this. Psalm 63, 7. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings, I sing for joy. Oh my goodness. Look, look. Come here, come here Matt. Man, this is, this is representing God. Amen? Put your arms down. Here we go. This is the wing. This, this is Matt. Now listen. When I'm under God's shelter, you know what song I'm singing? You know what song I'm singing? I'm singing the song, same song that I believe David sang to Goliath. I'm singing the same song I believe the Israelites sang to Pharaoh over the water. I'm singing the same song that I think maybe Jesus sang to the devil. You know what that song is? It's this. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Everybody say it with me. Na, 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 na. Say it to your enemy in your life. Na, 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 na. You, why? Because you're covered. You're covered under the shelter of his arms. Matt, you can sit right there. Thank you, Matt. Let's thank him, my beautiful, my beautiful assistant. Lovely. You're not done, but hold on just a second. Watch out. You've got some angry-looking people, so just while I'm saying. Look, Psalm 511 says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protective covering over them that all who love your name will be filled with joy. If you've got any trials in your life, you need to start singing some joyful praises. I never lost my praise, amen, because you're covered. You're under the shelter of Almighty God. He's your Father. He stands between you for every battle. He stands between you and every sickness, every enemy, everybody that seeks to ruin you and ruin your life. This, this ought to make you rejoice, because if God is for you, who can be against you? Romans 8, 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? This is amazing. Your mouth is going to drop open. Hold your mouth closed just for a second. Again, if God is for us, who can be against us? Against from the scripture. In fact, leave, leave it up there for a second. Dino, can you leave it up for just a second? Look at this. If God is for us, the, 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 against, the first word, God is for us, who can be against us? Against from, comes from the Greek word kata. Everybody say kata. And it means literally down, down upon, down upon. 
If God is for us, it says, for, the real translation of the word for is above. God is above us. So the scripture is more rightly said, go to the next one, will you, Dino? Here's how it should be written. If God is above us, who can come down upon us? God isn't just on my side. He's over me. He's under me. He's all around. It's not figurative. It means that you cannot touch me. It means between me and thee is he. Amen? We, we, we were at, at the mall on Friday night looking for prom dresses. You know, and, uh, and Saint and I said, we're going to go. The ladies were still, they're going to shut the mall down looking. I, we got to go to the other end of the mall to get the car. So I said, Saint and Elise, my three-year-old, let's go, to get, go head down to get the car. And we head down and we're, and we're walking through Dillard's and you see people kind of running and commotion and all stuff. And we're going down the escalator and there's this guy who gets on the escalator behind us, this e- Hispanic man with dirty old jeans and dirty old t-shirt and hat kind of on sideways and dark sunglasses and hasn't shaved in a while. And he, guess what he's doing? He's on a walkie-talkie. And he's saying... Yes, we have the person in the back, blah, blah, blah. They stole the 152, blah, blah. He's doing all these codes, 24, 39, 20, you know. And, uh, and, and he's doing all these codes. And I turn around, and I, and I go to, I go to Saint. I go, you know, who, you know who that is? And Saint goes, what? I go, that, that's, the, that's the security guy. He's undercover. He's undercover. And then we, we're coming down the escalator, and then there's some more guys run up to the bottom. I'm like, wait a minute. We're stuck in between this. What's going on? You know, we do, you know I can't go back to jail. Amen? And, uh, and uh, so we get down. We get off. But let me, let me tell you, oh, my, our heart, we were so crushed for whoever it was that came to the mall and, and, and had stolen something and, and, uh, and made, made such a mistake. We go outside, there's the, the police cruiser with the lights all going and what's going on. You, you, know what they, you know that guy inside? You know what they call that guy inside who's going around all secretively? You know what they call him? You, you've probably seen him when you've gone to Ross. They, they, have, they even wear their name on their vest. They're called a loss protection, loss prevention specialist. A loss prevention specialist. You know what God is in your life? He's a loss prevention specialist. Wherever you go, God is there making sure that there's no loss in your life. And, and, and for people, the people in our lives, that's what God calls us to be also. I'm the loss prevention specialist in my wife's life and in my daughter's life. In a relationship, the love of God calls you and I to be a covering and a protection to those in our lives. Our love is to cover and protect our wife and protect our kids. Love, love, put it up there, Dino. Here it comes. Love that protects keeps away outside forces that threaten us. Love keeps out harmful influences like a roof keeps out the rain. My job as a father is not just to protect my kids physically, but my love is there to protect them mentally and emotionally and above all, spiritually. I'm going to put myself between them and everything the devil wants to mess up in their lives. I'm going to put myself between my kids and everything the devil wants to ruin in their lives. My love protects their focus and puts it on the good things, in the positive things, and I protect and I'm going to stand against anything else trying to tear it down. That's my job in the Bible as a man of God, as a father. Love bears all things. Look, I might not like things that they do, but I'm going to be there and I'm going to cover them. I might not like all their choices, but I'm going to be there to cover them. My prayers are going to cover them. My daughter's going to a prom, and she said they've got a, they're going to a place that has an open roof. And I said, that's great, because Dad will be up on the roof. Amen. With another. And uh, I said, I've already got a hat with tree branches on it. And look, my faith is going to cover them. Look at this. Look at this. In a, in a loving relationship, love will always do its best to protect one, one another and the relationship from external forces that have potential to cause harm. Real godly people in your life will cover you and protect you and stand up for you and punch the devil in the mouth for you and stay up all night praying for you. I'm going to cover and protect my marriage with prayer and with God and my kids and my family and my church family. And anything that the devil wants to do in your life as your pastor, guess what? I'm going to get in the way. I'm going to get in the way. God struggles, God struggles and pressure is coming at you. I'm going to get in the way. Fighting against sin in your life, I'm going to get in the way. And I expect you to do the same thing for me. Amen, wherever I'm struggling. You know, when we started this church, we were meeting in the schools. We were looking for a place to call our own. And we got a phone call. And they said, come and see. Many of you heard this story. They said, come and see. This denomination had this building down here. This, this, this church building had closed down some, time, some years ago. And they said, come on down. We, we, want you to, we want you to move into this building. We want to give this building to you. And we came down to see it, and it was destroyed. 
there were gaping holes in the roof everywhere. And you could see the carpet, the water, the, whenever it rained, it had just been flooded in here. And we came to see it. And I saw this building. And I said, this, this is the ugliest building I've ever seen in my whole life. This is terrible. We don't want to go here. It was destroyed. The stage was up there. There was a big, huge rock wall. And it, it was just the ugliest place you've ever seen, ever. And, and, uh, and I said, no way. They called us again. We really think you're supposed to be here. I came down and saw it again, looked at the holes in the ceiling. No way. I left. No way. I left. Finally, God said, I'm, I'm trying to give you a place. You know? I said, okay, God. Well, we moved in, we, we, and we gutted the place. I mean, it was already gutted, but we... You know what I mean? We, we changed everything. We, 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 paint, we put in a new ceiling. We painted the ceiling. We New walls. We put in new drywall. We had TVs at the time that were up on the wall and uh, painted everything just beautifully and working on the kids' building. And the, the people that had rented us, rent, were renting us the building that moved us in here, they, they, said, uh, they, they said, look, the, the only problem is, is the roof. And I said, yeah, you need to fix the roof. They said, well, we'll, we'll get around to it. I, and I said, no, there's holes in the roof. Well, we'll get around to it. No, there's holes in the roof, you know? And, and so, well, sure enough, we just got the building done and rainstorm, rainstorm. It came in, it rained. It rained down all over the stage, everything. The TVs were wet. We threw out the TV. I called them up. I go, look, I'm standing in the building. There's holes in the ceiling. And the rain came in, destroyed everything. Well, they just said, they just, just, stuck, just deduct that from your rent. No, no, you need to fix the ceiling. Amen. You need to fix the roof. Well, guess what? We got a brand new TV. We repainted carpets. Guess what happened? Monsoon. Another rainstorm. Came in. Rain on everything. Just, just worse than ever, ever. So finally, I'm standing in here. And I mean, I, I, I was trying not to just cry because everybody had worked so hard. And I'm texting them. I said, look, I'm standing in here. And they text back, well, we're going to get to the roof as soon as we can. And so I texted. I said, look, love you guys. I said, but how many holes in the roof of your home would you be comfortable in going to bed with? I said, and this is God's house. There was somebody out the next day putting the covering up and they, and they put the wrong roof on. Then they had to get another roof. Listen, listen. It, 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 some of you, some of you, you think you got problems. You think you got a job problem. You think you got a finance problem, health problem, marriage problem, family problem. But for some of you, the real problem you have You've got a roof problem. Maybe you're under the wrong roof. Or you've got, you got one foot under the roof and one foot out of it. And it won't work that way. You've got to get yourself under God's roof all the way. Psalm 91 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High God will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Let me give you the full translation. I, I call this the fat translation. It's freakishly augmented translation. Psalm 91. Here's what the scripture says in full. He who permanently lives under the protective covering of the Most High God will live in a state of rest under the shadow of the protective roof of the Almighty Most Powerful God. You want to experience a more blessed life? Stay under the roof. Live under the roof. Operate under the roof. People always say, what's the secret of your life? I stay under God's roof. Amen? If you've got problems in your life, let me encourage you. It's, it, you I've got all these things going on. It's just God encouraging you and allowing things to happen so that you will get under the roof. He's got so much for you and blessings and purpose and plans that he's got, so he, he's not content to let you stand out in the elements, stand out in the storm and the hailstorm and the hailstorm. You need to get under the roof. This week, part 13 of my whole series, I didn't even plan it this way, today landed on the scripture, 1 Corinthians 13, 7, love always protects, always covers. And that is exactly and entirely the message of Easter. That you and I, in our sin, we were headed for death and hell. Matt, come on up here. You and I, we were headed for death and hell in our sin. And, and, and the Bible says the penalty for sin is death. But, but, but guess what happened? God, Jesus, jumped in the way. It, the, the, the penalty was ours to take. The punishment was ours to take. The sins were ours. My name was on every single sin. And Jesus, in the greatest loving act in the history of mankind, he stepped between me and hell. He stepped between you and hell. He stepped between us and death, and he covered us, and he took upon himself the punishment for our sins. He, he took all the stripes and the beatings that would have been mine. He took them for me. And, and, and where I was supposed to get on that cross, he got on that cross for me. 
and, and, and he took the ridicule and the scorn and the spit on and the laugh at, and, 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 and he took not, not, not just wimply, wimpy hammer nails, but they, 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 they pounded them into his hand. For me, it should have been my hand, and he stuck his hand in front of mine. He covered me deeply into his hands and feet. 1 Peter 2.23 says, look at this, when they heaped abuse upon him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats, but he entrusted himself to God who judges justly. He himself bore our sins on his body on the cross so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness. He stood between you and death, between you and grief and sorrows, and, and he carried it. He was pierced, and he didn't fight it. No, why? Because it was his job. I came here to die for you. This is the agape love of God, that he put himself between us and death. He covered us. He protected us. He died for us. The death that was meant for me, Jesus stood between us. The hell meant for me, Jesus stood between us. Jesus stood between you and sin, and he died willingly. You know something amazing about mother hens? They will take in stray chicks without a second thought. Did you know that? And they will protect them like their very own, even though they're not even their child. And without any thought or hesitation, that mother hen will sacrifice themselves for all of them. At a moment, they will run at any enemy, doesn't matter how big, how scary, how wild, that mother hen will, will run at it, they will, they will live. They live to cover and protect their chicks. And the same God who built that instruction into them doesn't just do it out of instinct, but he loves us so much that he chose 2,000 years ago to die for you and I, to cover us and protect us from death and hell. This, this, was, this, is, this is no image of a wimpy Jesus that we see on the cross. This is Jesus who came and willingly stood between us. Jesus was tasked with covering our sins and protecting us from death and hell, and he died doing it. That's how great his love is. But even greater his love is that even death couldn't keep him from coming back to cover and protect us all the way. God's love, God's love for us is more powerful than death and sin and hell. His power and his love for us brought him back. Listen, whatever wants to come after you in life, whatever wants to come after you, guess what? It's got to go through God first. Whatever comes after you, it's got to go through God. And if he still lets it through, it was meant to come through, to grow you and to bless you down the road. This is what God's love offers you and I, a love that never leaves us, never abandons us, always protects us, always is on our side, fights for us, shelters us, guards us, defends us. And all you and I have to do is accept it. All that we have to say is, yes, God, I want that. Yes, God, I believe in Jesus who did this for me. I trust in Jesus who did this for me. That's, that's what we got to say. All we got to do is say, God, I, 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 I want that gift. I repent. I don't want to live without you. I, I don't want to live outside of your roof. I want you and all that you have for me, not the world and what the world has for me. I want you, God. All we got to say is, God, I want to live right here under your protective, loving covering. Today, my friend, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Will you join me? And let us come to God. Let us come to Jesus. Let us come under God's protection, under God's hand, under God's wing. You might be facing lots of things in life. and Maybe your life has been a succession of comebacks or do-overs or try again and this failed, and you thought this was going to work, and it did for a while, and that failed, and that didn't work, and, 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 and this enemy came, and this trial came, and this person hurt you, and, and, and maybe, maybe the ultimate complete change in your life is easy, is as easy as you coming under the protective, covering love of Jesus Christ. Maybe that is the answer. I mean, I know it is for me. I've seen it in countless other lives but I'm not going to tell you what to believe. I'm telling you, you need to try it for yourself. That under God's hand, under God's wings, you live in a protected place that makes you bold and blessed. Even if you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll fear no evil. Any sickness, any trial, any challenge, any enemy, Today, believe in this Jesus who stood between you and hell and took every penalty 
paid every price, took the nails and whips and cross and death for you and I, laid in that tomb for you and I. He died for us, and then he rose for us. Today, trust in Jesus and his love that always protects. I'm going to pray a prayer right now, and this prayer is for those today who say, I want what Jesus did for me. I want to believe in this Jesus who stood between me and sin and me and hell and me and the devil and me and death, who stands between me and everything else in life, who covers me and protects me. I want that. And he'll never stop doing it. He'll never leave you, never abandon you, never forsake you, he says. He's not, God's, Jesus isn't like the world who, who's there for you one day and gone the next and, and says they'll be there for you and doesn't show up and says I'll protect you. And, and they, maybe they do temporarily but not for a time because they're worried about themselves. No, no, God is concerned about you. He, 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 he lives and loves for you. He lives to protect you and bless you. And today you can choose to trust in him and not the world. If you're tired of the world letting you down, if you're tired of living in sin, and you want to live God's way and learn about the freedom that he has and the goodness that he has and the blessings, that you want to live a free life, oh my word, God will set you free from everything, every sin, every, everything in your past that you've harbored, every secret thought, he forgives all of it. So the guilt and the shame is gone. So I'm going to pray a prayer right now, and if you want this today, if you want to accept this forgiveness of Jesus, if you want to trust in him, say it after me, and everybody else say it out loud to encourage those. Say it right now, Jesus, Son of God, I come to you today, and I want what you have. Today, Jesus, I believe in you. I trust in you. I want you and all that you have for me and all that you did for me. Forgive me of all my sins. Jesus, I repent. I don't want to live like the world anymore. I don't want to live for the world anymore. I want to live for you, God. I want to know your freedom, your forgiveness, your grace, your friendship, your love. I want to know that. So thank you, Jesus coming into my heart and forgiving me of my sins. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Now take a minute. If you prayed that prayer, take a minute and say, Jesus, thank you. Right now, right now, you are forgiven. Right now, every sin in your life is set free. Right now, God has written your name, he says, in the book of life. Right now, you are his. And he's going to transform you. He says the old you dies and the brand new you is created right now, free from sin free from your past, free from guilt, free from hell, all of those, free, gone. And now blessings in heaven and all the promises of God are yours, everything. It's all yours in Jesus' name. And if you're here today, this is for those of you that are here today that you've had one foot out and one foot in. Today, pull the foot that's out in. Pull it in. Get under the roof. And say, God, I want to live completely and totally under you, under your protection, under your covering. I want to live for you. I want to live in you. And today, God, I give you all of me, all of me, in Jesus' name. Tell them that. And God, help me to walk in the boldness of this covering. Help me to walk in the freedom of this covering. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of Easter Sunday that you stood between me and death and hell and you beat it, you destroyed it and you rose up from the grave and as you rose from the grave and went to heaven one day too I can go to heaven thank you Jesus come on let's thank him for a minute will you thank you Jesus thank you Jesus I'm gonna sing you our love song Jesus I'm so crazy about the way it changed my life Tell the world about the love between us Cause my heart has never felt alone